asked on my Tumblr what kind of questions you'd like to see answered this week, and Spores More asked, what do you know about mycorrhizal cheaters, plants like coral roots and pine saps? This is a super interesting topic involving the underground network between plants and fungi. In recent news, you may have heard about how trees talk with each other, and this is done using mycorrhizae. So in this video, I want to first explain what mycorrhizae is, how it works, and then I'll get into a little bit of what mycorrhizal cheaters are and how they work. And please don't be afraid of some of the more sciencey words I'm going to use in this video. I will do my best to break them down and keep everything easy to understand no matter what your background is. So first, what is mycorrhizae? Mycorrhiza is the symbiotic relationship between a fungus and the roots of a host plant. Instead of, say, decomposing a log for nutrients, mycorrhizal fungi gets its food from plants in underground connections. There are two main types of mycorrhizae, endomycorrhizae and ectomycorrhizae. Let's start with endomycorrhizae. These are the root cells of a plant. First, the mycorrhizae's hyphae, which are the roots of the fungus, find the plant roots. Endomycorrhizae enters the roots of the plant and penetrates the root cells, forming arbuscules, which help with the exchange in nutrients between the plant and the mycorrhizal fungi. Arbuscules are named such because they form a branching pattern resembling a tree. These branches increase the surface area of the fungal hyphae, which allows for more efficient exchange of nutrients. The plant gives the fungus carbon for energy, while the fungus gives the plant nutrients from the soil, like fixed phosphorus. It can also help protect the plant from disease. Endomycorrhizae also forms vesicles in the plant roots, which are bladder-like structures that store extra carbon for the fungus. Endomycorrhizal fungi can only be found in glomeromycota, which do not form large fruiting bodies like mushrooms. Around 80% of plant species have an endomycorrhizal association. Often there are specific associations between plant species and fungal species. So endomycorrhizae goes into the root cells of a plant and is characterized by these arbuscules and vesicles. Unlike endomycorrhizae, ectomycorrhizae does not penetrate the plant's root cells. Instead, it forms outside and between the cells. A hartic net forms between the cells, helping with the exchange. Ectomycorrhizae share water and soil nutrients, repel parasites and soil pathogen in exchange for carbon. In this photo, you can see the fungal sheath that forms around the plant roots and acts as a storage place for nutrients. It is less common than ectomycorrhizae, with around only 3% of plants forming this association. An ectomycorrhizal fungi species can form one or more plant associations too. So back to Sporesmore's question. What are mycorrhizal cheaters? Another word for them is mycoheterotrophs. They are the plants that get their carbohydrates or food via mycorrhizal fungi's association with other plants. They like chlorophyll, which is what allows most plants to photosynthesize or convert light energy into chemical energy. Instead of getting their food from the sun, they steal carbon from the mycorrhizal connection of a neighboring plant. Unlike most of the mycorrhizal fungi, mycoheterotrophs do not give anything in return for the carbon. Orchidaceae, the orchid family, has the largest number of mycoheterotrophic genera of any plant family, making up around 35% of fully mycoheterotrophic species. The species I am most familiar with in eastern United States is Monotropa uniflora, which is in the blueberry family Ericaceae. Within Ericaceae, there is a subfamily, Monotropoideae, entirely comprised of non-photosynthesizing mycoheterotrophs. Monotropa uniflora is associated with fungi in the Russellaceae family, and it is parasitic on the fungus. So while this ectomycorrhizal fungus is still providing the tree with key nutrients in exchange for carbon, the monotropa uniflora plant is taking some of that carbon for energy since it lacks the chlorophyll to get its own from the sun. So I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll see you next time.